Hello guys, good afternoon, 3rd of December 2020. Uh, this uh, presentation that I have uh, prepared for uh, new uh, blood, uh, new blood to the real estate industry for estate agency practice uh, under the name of uh, negotiator. So maybe a new negotiator uh, may find this useful and I hope that it may help uh, to make uh, it clear to decide whether to join this uh, industry. Right, um, this uh, presentation, I call it a starter kit lah for new uh, negotiator. Negotiator in the practice uh, is actually called the real estate negotiators. Lah. They, they are working under the supervision of the registered estate agent lah, in an agency firm. So I am a practicing a probationary estate agent. My number is 2066. I'd uh, like to maybe give a introduction uh, and uh, uh, maybe my level of free level for those who are interested to come to this industry. So new norm, uh, because we have COVID-19, uh, a lot of people might see this as a challenge in uh, currently unemployed scenario. Uh, also, we have uh, people who may be thinking of more um, to contractor type of work uh, rather than employee type of uh, scenario. Uh, the meaning to say that people tend to work on their own uh, so-called choice rather than uh, working for a company or working under a company. Uh. So these are type of thinking of a young people, uh, people millennium, where they think that they should be uh, working for themselves. Then we have also uh, investors who are real property investors uh, who, uh, because of the uh, hobby and also interest in estate agents, uh, agency practice, uh, so they, they evolve uh, from being an investor, become a real estate negotiator. So this is quite a big uh, amount of uh, people who tend to be initially as an investor, they buy their own house and then they rent their own house and then later on uh, they become a negotiator. So also we uh, also do have people who have uh, fixed their mind uh, to do this as a long, long career, uh, lifelong career under uh, estate agency practice. So they look uh, at this as a profession. So they are like me, probationary estate agent. Uh, so we are those who really think of it as a long-term career, we set our mind to do the written exam and then also to uh, register ourselves as a probationary estate agent. So objective of today's uh, presentation is about this profession of estate agency uh, or this uh, business of uh, estate agency. Uh, what is to go uh, in the new norm? That means you have COVID and then what would happen uh, after this COVID? What would be gone after this COVID? Or what is to stay? Meaning to say what uh, would be something uh, to think about and then to look into it as a element to cause uh, this uh, industry uh, to evolve uh, to a new adaptation for this uh, environment of uh, post-COVID. What will be coming? Uh, so that means there are future things that may not uh, be seen as yet, uh, but they are coming in. So these uh, new uh, things, what are they? And then they are also thinking of uh, maybe uh, self-assessing uh, critical factors that involve uh, the way that business is done. So a lot of time is about behavior. People behave uh, now in a new norm. So this we uh, term it as behavioral economics. Uh. So maybe some would think of it as like, you know, for example, uh, people don't go to shop anymore. People will do online shopping. So shopping online become a new norm and behavior of uh, purchaser and buyers uh, would be really shifted uh, to online uh, shopping. So this is uh, one example. Of course, uh, it affects a lot of businesses as well as uh, estate agency work. Right, uh, the setting of today's uh, talk, uh, in fact, uh, zoom to what would happen and what about the future. Lah. So let's say we uh, choose these few factors uh, to look at. Lah. So I choose four, four of the areas to look at. So interaction with public, uh, because estate agency work is actually interaction with public. 
and then we uh, use it. We are uh, in fact uh, you, you, we are using also some of this technology like the media, print media, and also internet uh, technology to reach to our clients, clients and public. Uh. Then we are also working under a legal framework. So um, legal framework means that you are supposed to be uh, safeguarding the um, interests of your principal and also safeguard the uh, interests of your clients, uh, all those purchasers and tenants. Uh. And then they are looking at also, uh, because it's selling, it's a job that is uh, dealing with selling. So it's more like interpersonal skill. Uh. So these are the four aspects that I probably use to explain a bit on what are to what are we to see and what are to stay and what are to go right so what about future on this four aspect of uh, area uh, uh, or we call it a uh, fundamental elements of uh, estate uh, agency work uh, in dealing with the estate profession so maybe in the future uh, interaction with public would rely more on media and technology uh, and then we probably also look at this in a format of a person being a social media um, profile rather than a simple uh, one person profile so a person will be appearing to the public uh, in the sense of a social profile so that actually handles uh, a lot about self-marketing or social marketing so this would be uh, i likely to be the in thing in the future and then we also have legal framework in the future that this profession or any other maybe legal regulated profession uh, would have data trials data trials and also uh, audits uh. that means you are leaving trails of uh, uh, data whereby uh, anything wrong uh, can get back to you in fact uh, can be proven as an evidence uh, in the court of law because of the ability of this digital world uh, to gather all those uh, trace and trail of your um, transaction and then lately uh, lately also we we do see that there is uh, anti-corruption uh, act uh, the uh, money laundering and uh, terrorism act uh, all these things are uh, would be uh, implemented in the future for combating uh, um, this, those uh, criminals uh. so uh, practicing in this uh, legal framework uh, in the future would uh, require anyone uh, or including uh, uh, also the negotiator uh, to be open to this type of risk uh, being uh, charged uh, in court uh, because of uh, handling a uh, big sum of money and the uh, implication of a uh, big sum of money uh, money laundering uh, terrorism or um, all the uh, all this uh, bribery criminal breach of trust so all these are uh, issues uh, plus uh, more competition because of uh, people appearing in the sense that um, on the social media then everyone actually creates his own profile in social media and therefore uh, you tend to see the level playing field uh, of everybody is a guru lah. so in that sense uh, long those days uh, you say 20 years you are a guru now uh, 20 days also become guru uh, so it becomes a scenario of more competition uh, in that sense uh, or over the uh, new uh, norm so let us uh, go into more detail right uh, the main characters uh, in the real estate business uh, or I would say the real estate agency work uh, actually it handles by four types of people uh. so four types means that the one is the registered estate agent of course we all know they are the registrant or the principal of the estate agency firm then you have a lot of uh, people in the field they are the a negotiator they call themselves uh, uh, negotiators they are real estate negotiators uh. then the third group is the smaller group but then uh, it's a coming up group it's a professional estate agent who are helping um, also like a negotiator in a firm but they are pursuing their own licensing and then lastly is the investor and then the investor I put down here as investor but actually it encompasses uh, a lot of uh, freelance agents, uh, all those uh, illegal agents. Uh, they are they themselves are investors. They claim to be investors. They they are pretender also. Uh, they are looking at uh, good deals. Uh. So let us look at the uh, main character. Huh? So the firm usually run by a purpose for long term business. Uh. So usually the 
registered estate agent, they have strategic business marketing uh, in mind, whereby they think of it as a system, they think of it as a both, uh, probably a platform or system or a network. And then they are more cautious, they are watch and wait, they are probably not so much thinking about immediate money. They are thinking more on the long-term survival for the firm as well as the name for the firm. Usually they are also cost-centered because the reason for it is that they want to minimize the running costs and then get more profit. Because when the business is brought in, uh, it's already brought in by um, having a network of uh, negotiator out there. And then this negotiator, they share profit with the uh, firm. So if they can share less uh, with the negotiator, then they can minimize the cost of uh, managing these negotiators. So cost is the uh, main issue and also uh, how to you know, minimize the cost of advertising. And also advertising means uh, some of the firms actually pay big advertisement to big uh, uh, internet portals. Uh. So these are reasons that the negotiator, they get to this firm, they work for this firm because they have got the firm behind them which uh, engage this big, uh, in, in a way, international uh, marketer and in, in international advertising uh, brand. So therefore, the negotiator stick to this firm. So negotiator looks at uh, things which are short term and therefore they are getting deals and uh, trying to uh, close the deal. So selling is their main purpose and the main strategy. They usually would not think about marketing. So they uh, are more self-directed. They want the immediate income for their, uh, their mouth to feed. And uh, they probably sometimes even hit and run. When there is a good deal, they will just jump in. And then when there is a scenario where they cannot manage, they will pass on to somebody else or they will disappear. So this is the mindset. They are more profit mindset. Meaning to say when there is a sweet, uh, then the ends will go. The PA are the temporarily group, uh, which uh, sometimes they are more or less the same as negotiator. They are profit driven because they actually uh, came out from being a negotiator. Many of the probationary estate agents uh, rooted, uh, they have uh, been working for estate agency firm for many years. Uh. They, they have the mindset of a negotiator. So likely uh, uh, PA uh, hopefully can uh, assimilate uh, into the agency uh, in a better form. Uh, in this, I mean that the firm uh, being able to embrace those PA in the future as a partner of the firm and therefore expand the firm practice. But many a time, uh, the principal of the existing firm uh, may not think like that because the principal of the firm thinks like more like uh, what is in it for me, uh, what is my profit, whereas the PA uh, who will become a registered estate agent uh, may be concerned and suspicious of what sort of uh, sharing, uh, profit sharing uh, is there for him in the future. Likely, uh, last bit uh, is the investor group. They are short-term deals. Uh, they are looking for uh, good deals and run away. So this uh, mentality is more like a investor and also a legal agent. Uh. So the legal agent looks at the business for the purpose of a short-term, closing the deal and uh, making a flip and then make the money. So this is the general character of uh, what uh, you see in the market uh, for the different types of uh, uh, role uh, a person will see uh, see and dealing with the dealings of real estate. Uh, to this uh, aspect of conflict, uh, I mean we um, superimpose uh, the conflict issue uh, onto the uh, discussion of the characters just now. Uh. So firms are more of making profit uh, more, uh, thinking of making profit more by cutting the cost. So if the firm is able to do away with the cost, uh, the meaning to say to share profit with the investor or share profit from the uh, negotiator, then the firm uh, would have a more lean uh, cost uh, control. So there's a conflict there by the scenario that the firm would not uh, likely uh, uh, going to expand and give more money to the investor or give more money to the negotiator uh, to bring in the business. Because the issue is, uh, if I can use a new technology uh, to do away with these uh, negotiators, uh, then I would prefer uh, to invest 
uh, my money uh, or my resources uh, into having a platform a platform which I actually uh, bring profit without having to confine to the cost uh, of profit sharing uh, with the negotiator so a lot of firms are looking into this as a way out uh, to minimize their cost of course investors as a you mentioned uh, uh, about if you mentioned about investor as being a long-term investor they they want to do away with intermediary as well so this conflict of uh, your thinking of making money and then uh, saving the cost of transaction therefore uh, the scenario is uh, they will likely uh, go away or do away uh, with intermediaries so a uh, negotiator being thinking of uh, short-term profit uh, would not uh, invest in long-term system or long-term plan uh, to improve their standing uh, among the players in the market uh. so a lot of the investors just uh, bypass the negotiators they do themselves as an they themselves taking over the job of a negotiator and then the end up you know uh, big firms rely on uh, platforms and big uh, systems uh, application and apps uh. so in the future that this uh, intermediary role of a negotiator being uh, eroded lah. and at the end uh, knowledge is a bluff lah. that means how well knowledgeable you are in a way uh, present, uh, presented to the investor or to the purchaser buyer tenant or or whoever uh, your uh, client uh. deals is everything lah. deals are everything because at the end of the day uh, uh, what is important uh, in the in the hand uh, is actually you close the deal and you get paid so whatever issue on uh, system strategically how do you position yourself uh, in a lot of time for a short term it does not translate to immediate end of sales so strategy also uh, to a lot of uh, scenario of uh, negotiator which are in 90 percent of the time uh, uh, not thinking about long term uh. so they, they they only think that strategy is just bluff it's only talk and then uh, profit is everything so therefore these are the conflicts that you see uh, in the job uh, market uh, for a uh, real estate uh, industry uh. so if you are coming in as a negotiator you have to accept that this is what is going on in the market and you do not expect your buyer or your uh, tenant uh, to to support you because you have a long uh, standing knowledge of the industry you've been there for many years or you have been uh, able to do uh, uh, planning for your customers for the end user for the end uh, investor or a buyer purchaser or tenant uh, it is what is seen as a deal which uh, benefits them uh. so I want to buy at a cheaper price I want to go without uh, having to pay extra cost I want to get the best deal of my life so this is the end not the process the process of how to do it uh, the cost factor involved uh, is is not your cost it is the negotiator's cost or uh, in, the, in a way this cost is coming from uh, the market uh, example a market which is uh, demand driven uh, that means the market of uh, uh, rare or scarcity of a certain uh, property uh, then of course the seller can uh, push up the price so this cost will come from the so-called buyer because the buyer is willing to come in to buy at a higher price so the price of the transaction actually uh, the cost of the transaction or the uh, the fee that is paid to the intermediary uh, although it's paid from the seller side uh, but then the seller up the price and then which is paid by the at the end paid, the, paid by the purchaser so the total cost is swallowed by the purchaser the investor so it uh, is uh, market driven in such a way so whatever profit uh, you are looking at uh, is uh, bottom line is uh, on the dotted line of a sales and purchase agreement so conflict with ethics uh, then comes into the issue because uh, we were saying just now uh, a deal uh, or a dealing uh, would, uh, would go through uh, when there is a purpose for this deal but this uh, purpose uh, is interpreted as the end that means when you uh, go to sit for the exam uh, people will not ask you how do you study people will just ask you what is your result so the end result uh, is the one that uh, uh, makes it uh, the yardstick uh, of the value so therefore uh, conflict with ethics uh, come into sense that it is a mean to an end issue 
So the end is the dollar sign and then the mean is the process and the method that you arrive at the end. So this uh, phrase, uh, uh, means to an end, uh, actually uh, just mean to say that people don't look at the process, people look at the end result. So there will be those who give excuses uh, for defaulting the law just to achieve the, uh, the end. Meaning to say, uh, to be able to get rich, uh, you would uh, do anything uh, without having uh, concern so much about uh, ethics or conducts. So it is a norm now because uh, in a sense, the society has become so materialistic that uh, even sometimes we say a mistress uh, would claim to be of a better standing than the actual wife and then uh, proudly uh, in front of uh, public uh, claim herself uh, to be a mistress. So this type of uh, no moral issue uh, in a sense uh, in the eye of today's uh, war of uh, material uh, worship uh, actually says that negotiator at times uh, they just don't do much thinking uh, as long as there is uh, a good deal uh, to close. So borrowing the saying from the Deng Xiaoping uh, uh, no matter what color is your cat uh, whether it's a white cat or a black cat, uh, as long as it can uh, catch the rats. Uh. So they're looking at the end. They don't look at which form, so whether it is uh, profit making or it is uh, not profit making. Whether you do it uh, ethically or you don't do it ethically, uh, that is uh, besides the point. Uh, huh? So winning by strategies without limits, uh, this uh, scenario in the real estate market is that uh, there will be all sorts of people trying to, all sorts of way uh, to do the deal and then to arrive at a good profit for their ends. Uh, and then the ends is usually just money uh, to get rich. So this uh, part, uh, uh, if you are not able to accept uh, this scenario of uh, how the world look at um, our society now, so maybe you have a tough time trying to adapt to the real estate business. Uh. So likely the solution uh, in the long term to uh, so-called compare to short term uh, would be more to research and then the short term more to just selling and then doing your bids uh, by uh, doing listing. So targeting your customer best. But the long term uh, to survive in this industry would require a lot of uh, research into platforms and how you're going to do advertising so that the firm would survive long term. So this is usually the mind of the uh, registered estate agents and also the probationary estate agents because they are person to survive in this uh, very competitive world. So what is the main message of all the uh, slides that we have uh, just gone through? The main part is that for you as a new uh, into you are new into this uh, real estate industry uh, for a starter kit uh, you probably need to do uh, more reading uh, to understand the profession uh, to understand the market and then, uh, other than that, uh, the real uh, down-to-earth scenario is that there is uh, no salary uh, to actually pay for the negotiator. Some companies, some agencies, they do pay uh, salary because they can benefit from claiming back uh, as a small and medium industry a registered firm uh, with the government. So this is also due to COVID. Uh, so some of these... Uh, packages uh, or economic uh, packages has been extended to real estate market. But uh, in the long term, uh, I would not think that the uh, estate agents, uh, especially the negotiator, would be paid a salary. Uh. So basically, uh, that is the norm in the market. Uh, it's more of a profit sharing. You bring in profit, you give some profit to the company. So this uh, profit sharing can uh, range uh, between 40% to even as high as 90 over percent uh, that is uh, in the law uh, allowable only 40 percent but then in the real scenario in the down uh, on the ground uh, it is uh, as high as uh, 90 over percent the simple reason is uh, a firm may have a lot of negotiator and each and every negotiator brings in a uh, sum of uh, 10 percent uh, would be a sustainable uh, income for the for the firm so the firm may have this advantage of having huge network of negotiator and still making a good business sense especially in a high 
uh, price uh, market area like one one million uh, house you you make a uh, incentive or you make a commission for the company at ten thousand to twenty thousand per 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 case uh, and then you are able to bring in 20 30 case a month so this type of scenario uh, the agency firm uh, may be very willing uh, to keep this uh, negotiator so likely a uh, new thing for the uh, negotiator to understand is that uh, there are expenses that the negotiator need to come out to pay from their own pocket which is uh, quite substantial and this is uh, of course advertisement and to uh, put advertisement for a young uh, a new negotiator it may eat into its uh, own uh, income that means when you do certain advertisement like uh, if you are uh, quite active in a few portals, uh, yeah, give, uh, quite active in a few platforms, uh, you need to spend a lot into advertisement. Uh. So sometimes these are inevitable issues uh, for a young uh, negotiator to gain, to gain the acceptance of the market and then to be able to uh, close your deals. Uh. And some of these uh, lately uh, also come into a scenario is that the market is very slow, the market has slowed down a lot especially the secondary market so there is no immediate sales and there is no immediate sales being that the uh, general public is worried about um, paying for big uh, ticket items so they uh, shy away although they may be um, moving their money from a fixed uh, deposit uh, to a certain stock market uh, but then they are not uh, putting the money into real estate because of the concern that they will be a long-term uh, repayment. And the other uh, issue of uh, being a negotiator out there uh, is that there is no differentiation or specialization between the negotiators. Uh, the reason I say this is because most of the firms that employ or engage a lot of uh, negotiators, uh, they are doing project sales. So when they do project sales, uh, they are selling the same product. So you are part of the network of negotiators or sales agents. Uh, that uh, sells the same product so uh, your client comes to you not because of your ability or your knowledge uh, but because of the so-called product that is behind you so therefore um, in fact joining uh, a firm and do uh, sales for uh, project uh, marketing uh, is actually a mindset uh, that you have to convince yourself that you are uh, you are just uh, me too uh, to a lot of other colleagues and uh, negotiators. Uh. Buying anything from you is like buying anything from the others. There is no difference. Uh. need to really uh, craft yourself in this uh, mindset uh, so that you can sustain and then to be even more hardworking uh, than your other colleagues uh, to be able to uh, gain your trust uh, with your customers. And a lot of time we are reactive to market. Uh. That means we, we do not actually go and target the market. The market comes forward because there is a chance that somebody wants to buy a property, therefore you happen to be there and therefore you cross the deal. There is no way that you know in the market who are the potential uh, purchasers. So a uh, bit like in the sense that uh, for an example, uh, then you want to do fishing. So you must uh, study uh, which part of the pond uh, maybe there will be more fish. Rather uh, than uh, just trying out in a random manner because you would understand that the reason why uh, fishes will be abundant in one place and not in another place uh, then uh, in that sense uh, you will be able to catch more fish but uh, a lot of time in the sense uh, for our current way of marketing uh, we tend to market it as a blanket of marketing uh, meaning to say we use Facebook and then we just push out all the advertisement to everybody just wait for whoever will come forward and in this scenario every negotiator out there is doing the same and second uh, part of uh, things that I want to talk about uh, for negotiators who are newly joining the industry uh, is that you need to go through the negotiator certification course organized uh, for you uh, this is a two-day sit, sit down event during the time where you can physically attend uh, this uh, NCC now with the COVID uh, some of the NCC program has moved on to online uh, classes which can drag on to three and a half days uh, because the uh, person need to go through. After that, then you get registered uh, with a firm uh, through a firm to be a negotiator and given a negotiator tag, name tag. 
So may have to pay some fees to some agencies because they say they do training or they give a certain uh, session of classes and this uh, also may include uh, some company t-shirt and things like that which uh, may cost some money so all this you need to get ready and next of course is to come down to the floor to go down to the ground to get listings and then do your advertisement and wait for people to call you for uh, looking for the listings so likely uh, I will come to this as a survival kit one. Just now was starter kit. So now how to survive uh, when you are a new negotiator? Six months learning, you have to lightly uh, spend amount, the amount of time learning your area. Uh, usually a good negotiator would zoom to a certain uh, specific area and be good at that area so that when the customer uh, look for certain types of uh, specifics, uh, then this uh, knowledge uh, on the ground uh, may be able to enhance the closing. Spend about 1,000 uh, ringgit for advertisement. Some places like you have a few portals, you have a few platforms to advertise, probably even more than 1,000. So uh, all depends on your listing, number of listing that you have. You have more listing, you want to put more listing, then therefore you need to spend more advertising fee. So again, the traveling uh, time uh, due to your being new may have to spend more money on petrol because you need to do the uh, studying of the place and then uh, go around the taman or farming area lah. they call it a farming area so that you understand the farming area well uh, negotiator will join some roadshow or open house lah. then it takes up time and sometimes uh, due to covid lah, you also risk your exposure to uh, public uh, risk lah. hygiene and things like that so if uh, everyone is a uh, rent, then uh, the agency firm uh, or the developer firm uh, would just uh, need somebody there to sit down to just in case a uh, customer walk by. Uh. So this type of uh, mindset, uh, you must uh, be able to accept uh, the fact that, hey, sorry, uh, you are not so important. Uh, you just sit down here. You are just another club uh, in that sense. Uh. Every developer himself or herself or uh, uh, the company itself uh, is also selling direct to customers so there is no law that says that the developer must get an agent to represent the developer the developer can sell direct to a customer so if a customer will walk into a developer shop and buy direct from the developer shop uh, an agency firm uh, cannot complain very much uh, unless you have proof that you have engaged this uh, uh, conversation with the uh, particular purchaser or particular interest party uh, with a proof of uh, maybe uh, conversation or, or collection of um, IC or collection of uh, booking fee or else uh, the customer can just walk bypassing all the sales agent and direct to the test of the developer and pay the booking fee there is no way that you can stop a developer by not accepting this uh, customer and the reality in life is that to survive, uh, there is nobody that, that will help you to get rich. Uh. The, the, this is a very naive thinking. Uh. People are wanting to help you to make you rich. Uh. It's only probably your parents. Uh. Nobody else. Uh. Uh, even Sometimes even your partner or your your very good friend also will not think like that. So uh, wake up. Uh, huh? So second part of a survival kit I want to emphasize is that what would you to expect uh, post uh, COVID? Uh, I would think that these are the following the following are the few things uh. one is uh, there will be more unemployment be shut down or uh, locked down and then there will be less free money because a lot of people who has uh, money now becomes unemployed and then now there is uh, less uh, free money because they don't get uh, to work and earn more money then uh, next come in will be uh, because of uh, less uh, surplus uh, of money um, resources or surplus of money eh, there will be less people buying in short term and then hold in short term and sell because the transaction cost is high and then because there is demand supply issue where market will not recover in the short term therefore there will be mo no more uh, no more such thing as uh, uh, buying a, a flip and then uh, making money out of the flip it will be less commercial investment because a lot of things are moving online because of the uh, way that covid has caused us to go online so COVID has caused us to go online. A lot of time, uh, all these uh, retail shops uh, may not be required anymore. So a lot of this retail uh, investment, uh, commercial retail investment, uh, would be cut down. 
and there will be less also less expectation from our uh, principal agent or from the landlord and the owners of the property uh, because uh, the demand is low so they probably uh, cannot expect much also from the market uh. so even uh, one thing to sell they will probably come down on their price and then uh, absorb some of the cost uh, of uh, marketing uh. because this is now buyer and tenants market and uh, they will be assessed uh, supply for a while and therefore uh, if you are an agent uh, looking at the make, making money out of this uh, segment of the uh, economy uh, uh, it will be harder than those years uh, where the market saw in frenzy uh. so those days uh, has gone past and now uh, you have to accept the fact that uh, you need to work on long-term platform and uh, research into newer uh, way to cut down costs lastly uh, uh, why you want to join a real estate uh, industry huh? there are reasons that uh, although there are a lot of clouded uh, or so-called depressing way of uh, looking at real estate industry in the next few years uh, but there are good things also so what is to stay uh, uh, what to stay real estate is to stay definitely uh, because uh, space uh, living uh, is actually a need uh, not a one so when a family gets uh, more kids uh, then they will need to upgrade uh, to a bigger place or when a younger uh, teenager become uh, adult uh, then they are families and then they need to maybe expand to move to a better comfortable place so space is definitely some um, uh, resource uh, which uh, is a commodity uh, that cannot be replaced uh. and uh, real estate is also an inefficient market uh. by this uh, I mean to say that there are other uh, businesses where it can be replaced by computer uh. let's say you go uh, to airport uh, those who help you to check in uh, or maybe in the future is uh, in by yourself uh, self check in uh, using machine whereas uh, in the case of uh, real estate uh, because real estate is an efficient market you don't know <coughs> the market unless you are there for a while maybe it's easier to explain uh, giving the example a contrast of uh, stock market uh. so stock market every day you know uh, prices uh, uh, up and down whereas the uh, in real estate uh, most of the time it, it's not reported even if it is uh, reported uh, usually it is uh, reported in uh, jpph valuation uh, or when the uh, transaction is needed to pay stamp duty uh. so this type of situation in NAPIC also would be very much delayed and not so accurate because of the in the in the sense uh, a lot of uh, undisclosed uh, information so unless you are in the market for long then you will not know what is the price of a property uh, in that area so being a negotiator and farming in the area for a long time uh, uh, therefore there is an advantage of this negotiator to be able to uh, assist the decision making of the parties uh, involved in the dealing uh. and therefore i would say that a negotiator's job on the real estate agent uh, or registered estate agent job uh, uh, the role that play uh, may not be replaceable uh, in the sense that um, you don't expect to see a uh, transaction of houses uh, in Malaysia as yet uh, in the next 10 to 20 years uh, be traded like in a stock market uh. and also another uh, reason is that because property or real estate is actually uh, illiquid uh, that means you cannot uh, transact it in a very short term period uh, so there will be a long uh, standing of uh, holding that means uh, people who are having uh, real estate may hold it for a number of years uh. so if you are long enough uh, you may be serving the same customer over a lifetime so in fact for us uh, as a, in the market uh, if you actually handle some of the big uh, clients uh, you may be handling uh, in a huge number of uh, real estate over a period of time so if you enter uh, to this market early uh, therefore you are maybe able to help uh, handle the real estate for uh, a client uh, over two or three generation of uh, families uh. so these are good things that you can keep this client whereas uh, in other industries uh, maybe uh, after the first generation uh, there is no need of uh, using uh, uh, this agent anymore lastly uh, um, because 
real estate is about location and space. So therefore, knowledge of the space, knowledge of the location and the evolution of the location from a new township to a mature garden, this period of maybe even years or even in decades, actually is a valuable information for for agent to be able to offer to purchaser or prospects to decision making. Like most uh, uh, agents and, and uh, real estate people, huh, the most critical of all, uh, in fact, in the future, uh, this is what I mean to say, what is in the future to come. Uh, and some of this already uh, happened in the uh, current state. Is the real estate actually head on collide uh, with technology. So um, a lot of time, many uh, estate agency firm already team up with this big agency of uh, techno, uh, more like a tech agent, we call tech agent. So this is called tech directed or tech assisted or tech enabled agent. So um, being a new person uh, as a new negotiator, then uh, this will be something that you face uh, in the future. So uh, look at this as a serious uh, direction that you want to um, maybe even invest, um, invest knowledge or invest your uh, time to uh, develop your own uh, technology so that you are able to head on collide uh, with technology in the future. Right, a uh, review over my talk just now, uh, I would say that uh, the in thing about coming to this job uh, as a new negotiator would be to reposition yourself. Uh. You need to research and think about what you are in the position of a uh, estate uh, negotiator. Uh. So I have a few websites and uh, also uh, related to my thinking, justletak.com and contract to you. So thank you very much for following this uh, presentation. I am Thomasin. Um, my number is as display. I have various websites uh, and uh, for, for my interest area and passion into estate agent exam. Thank you.